With the release of the Canon R6 Mark II, there is surely going to be a Canon R5 Mark II coming out very, very soon, hopefully within the next year. And there has been a lot of rumors and a lot of different articles on the Canon R5 Mark II, going from specs, that it's gonna have an upgraded sensor, it's gonna have better video features. Well, because this is a camera that I'll be very interested in purchasing in the near future, I thought I'll go over a wish list that I'd actually like to see in the Canon R5 Mark II. Because I was actually gonna get the Canon R5 over the Canon R6 Mark II, and I opted to get the R6 II instead, mainly because it was cheaper, because I was going to get the Canon R5 anyway, the Canon R5 II is definitely something of interest for me. And the first major thing I would love to see in the Canon R5 Mark II is no overheating at all, because as you know, the Canon R5 was an overheating mess, especially at launch. I do think they have improved it a lot now. If you had it at the start, the overheating was so, so bad, it actually put so many people off actually buying it, and it actually did give a bad taste in Canon's name especially because of how they marketed it. They didn't mention it at all. They were just marketing constantly on that 8K resolution. And obviously in the 8K, that's where it's gonna be the worst because it's so much data in such a small body. That's why it just overheated. And that's why the Canon R5C actually got a fan on the back of the camera to actually stop it from overheating. I would love no overheating at all, just like the Canon R6 Mark II. Well, I've not noticed it anyway when I've used it. And I'd actually like no fan on it as well. So it keeps that nice compact body or not getting any overheating issues at all while actually maintaining all of that lovely resolutions and frame rates. The second feature that I would love to see in the Canon R5 Mark II is the exact same flip tilt LCD screen that you can find on the Sony a7R5. I actually said I would love this anyway before I, Sony even released this because when I had my Fuji, it was a tilt screen. And when I upgraded to my Canon, it was a flip LCD screen and I loved the way I could tilt my Fuji screen. So I just thought, why isn't there a camera that has both? Sony actually came out of it and everyone loves it. So I would absolutely love it so much if Canon did that because it's the best of both worlds then. It can tilt down while keeping it compact and not making it too wide. And it can also come out and flip so you can vlog. It's probably the most perfect way you can actually have an LCD screen. And if it actually keeps the same resolution, touch screen capabilities, and all of the same high quality features that it has on all of the Canon other LCD screens, then it'll be one of the best LCD screens out there. And I do think it will actually sway a lot of people to get the Canon R5 Mark II. Another thing that I would love to see in the Canon R5 is just the exact same ergonomics as the Canon R6 Mark II. As you know, there has been so many ergonomical changes with the Canon cameras these days, from the Canon R8, from the Canon R6 Mark II, the Canon R6, the Canon R5, the Canon uh, R7, they've actually completely changed so much. Like the on-off button started out on the left, then with the Canon R7, they changed it to an on-off, and then if you moved it one to the right, it was a video. And on, on Canon R6 Mark II, it would be where your right finger would be, and the photo to video switch is actually where the old on-off used to be. I think they've not perfected it, but I think they've done a really good job with the Canon R6 Mark II. I like where the on-off button switch is, so you can completely do it one-handed. I like where the photo to video switch is, where the old on-off switch used to be, because it's not needed all the time, but when you do and you switch it, it's really satisfying and it's super quick. It's literally instant. So if the Canon R5 Mark II can have the same ergonomics, like the same photo video switch on the left, and the same on switch on the right, just to keep it consistent, because I think Canon have found a really good way of actually doing this to their cameras. I think that'll be great, and it will just make it so easier when you do use both cameras, because if you're using, at the minute I'm using an R6 Mark II and a Canon EOS R, it's completely different, because the on-off switch is on the left side, if you wanna change from photo to video, you've gotta do the mode, info mode again, and it's just, can get a little bit confusing. So if you can have the exact same features of the R6 Mark II, that would be amazing. Another thing I'd love to see in the Canon R5 Mark II is the same, if not probably it should be better, autofocus that's in the Canon R6 Mark II. I think the Canon R6 Mark II has pretty much the same as the Canon R3s, and they are the best in the business in my opinion. It latches onto the eye, you can choose which eye you can focus onto. You've got amazing eye tracking in general. The autofocus locks onto so many more uh, subjects, like I think planes, trains, birds, it latches onto the eye of animals, it's unbelievable. And I know the Canon R5's autofocus is also unbelievable as well, but the Canon R6 Mark II just adds that little bit extra. So it, if it can have the same, but arguably probably a little bit better than that, then I think that'll be absolutely amazing and it'll work so well with the Canon R6 Mark II. Another thing that I think everyone wants in the Canon R5 Mark II, and especially videographers, is a full-sized HDMI port. Now, having micro HDMI ports is ridiculous in 2023. With my Canon EOS R, I think that even had a mini 
uh, HDMI port, which isn't the best, but it's still not a micro. It's a lot better than a micro. Um, but for some reason, they just keep going to micros. I mean, even a Canon R5C has a micro HDMI port, and that's a cinema camera. So I wouldn't be surprised if it keeps the exact same micro HDMI port, which is stupid in my opinion. They need to have a full-size HDMI port in there, especially for videographers who want to actually put on uh, Ninja Atomos, for example, because especially the Canon R6 Mark II, if you use a Ninja Atomos, uh, you can ex record uh, 6K RAW uh, to that uh, external recorder and without it you can't do 6K RAW. So the fact that you, the only way to do that is to actually use an external recorder but you have a micro HDMI port which is the most flimsiest thing I've ever used. It's absolutely ridiculous. So the Canon R5 Mark II needs a full HDMI port and so does every Canon camera from now on. Another thing that I'd absolutely love to see is 240 frames per second. Now ideally in 1080p because if they do put it in I can see them putting it in at 720p like they did with 100 frames per second in the Canon EOS R which wasn't the best because I don't really like the look of 720p. I mean it's still technically HD which I don't really know how it's technically HD in 2023 because it doesn't look very good at all in my opinion. So if they do put it in and I really hope they do because it's not in many cameras these days I would love it in 1080p. It might not be used loads and I don't think it'll be needed really for anything unless it's super super, super specific niche stuff but 240 frames per second which i think would anyway be 200 frames per second in the uk would be just a great just for fun basically like i like taking videos of birds super slow motion some cars super slow motion if i had 200 frames per second um, in 1080p i'd actually use that quite a lot but i think it really should have autofocus as well if it doesn't have a really good autofocus then again a lot of people probably won't use it and it's probably a waste putting it in so if they do actually have full autofocus in 1080p i think that would be amazing uh, mode to have in the canon r5 mark ii and i think a lot of people will be interested again like if you keep adding these things like it's got it over the canon r6 mark ii and the old canon r5 they need to start putting stuff in like 240 frames per second in 1080p to actually separate it from other cameras otherwise people will just go to Canon R6 Mark II. Well even though the Canon R5C doesn't have that it's still like a couple years old now. If the Canon R5 Mark II don't come out till next year or maybe late this year you never know you can see them putting it in especially if you want to go all out and beat every competition out there. Now this one is definitely a stretch and I really don't think this will happen but I would love to see it happen especially because the Canon R5C doesn't have it which is a cinema camera and that is C-Log2. Canon R5C has C-Log3, so does the Canon R5, so does all the Canon cameras apart from their main cinema cameras like the C70, C300 Mark III, and surprisingly the Canon R5C doesn't have it. So because the R5C doesn't have it, I really don't see the Canon R5 Mark II will have it because I think they just want to save it for their top of the line cinema cameras because C-Log2 is amazing and I love it so much. The only annoying thing with the C-Log3, I think it's great. It's just not very good in the shadows from what, what, I've, what I've experienced. When I've actually been using like bright up the room a little bit more and just sticking to that 800 ISO which is a native ISO I have seen a lot better in the performance but it's still not amazing and I think if the Canon R5 Mark II had C-Log2 I, I know for a fact I'd be all over that camera and I think most a lot of people out there will be all over that camera as well but because the R5C don't have it don't expect it to have it and I don't expect it either but it's just something that I would love it to have. Another huge thing that will be in it I'm so certain because the R6 Mark II has it over the Canon R6 is unlimited record in 25 frames per second because if you're doing an interview you need unlimited recording so people with the r5 with a 29 minute uh, 59 second record limit is terrible because you just have to keep going over and pressing the record button again and again and again every half an hour and if the interview is longer than half an hour which a lot of the time it is it can just be annoying especially if you do forget so the fact that the canon r6 mark ii has this i really expect the canon r5 too and it really should so that's pretty much everything i would love to see in the R5 Mark II and hopefully it will come out at the end of this year. I'm not sure if it will, I think they will wait another year, maybe if it come out early next year. But if, the, if it's going to be releasing at the same time as the R6 Mark II around in November, then that is definitely a possibility that could actually happen. I would love to Canon R5 Mark II in the future and I'd sell my EOS R to fund it, but for, for now I'm happy with my R6 Mark II and my EOS R and I'm just wait, waiting patiently for the Canon R5 Mark II to actually come out. Hopefully it will be the same price as the R5 because if it does, uh, cost a little bit more then obviously that's going to be a little bit of a problem because it's just more money at the end of the day but I can't wait for this camera and I want to know if you can't wait either so leave your thoughts in the comments below will you be buying a Canon R5 Mark II are you excited for it make sure you leave your thoughts in the comments below so if you did enjoy this video why not watch this video next where I actually go over five reasons why you should buy the Canon R6 Mark II 
I think it will be a perfect uh, duo camera to actually have R5 Mark II and R6 Mark II. So if you do actually want to get this camera while you're waiting for the R5 Mark II, then watch this video next.